Trump leads Biden in swing state, Michigan. That's your state for the 2024 election. There is a poll. The poll found that half of Michigan voters, half, disapprove of the job Joe Biden is doing. Steve, I've got to ask, were you surprised it wasn't more than that? Uh, you know, I'm always surprised. But listen, a lot of these folks don't get their, their information from networks like this one. They get it from places. Listen, I mean, Devin Archer got zero coverage last week on the big network, CBS, ABC, NBC. Uh, believe it or not, they didn't get any coverage at all. Now, even if those networks don't believe uh, what Devin Archer is saying or the storyline or whatever it is, it's still something you would cover. But they gave it no coverage. Even CBS that has Catherine Herridge out there, which is a journalist alive in the wild, very rare specimen, by the way, to have somebody like her out there, um, she uh, got no time, nothing. Which is So you have to remember, <clears throat> a lot of the people's information out there is very skewed. It's very much uh, through the prism of Joe Biden's good, climate change dangerous, COVID vaccines good. You got to remember all this fear mongering and so forth. So, yeah, I'm surprised, but with everything that's sent at these people, I'm kind of proud of those that are smart enough to get it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, one I'm, of those I'm who curious, definitely gets Steve. it, David Brody. <laughs> yeah, Steve. Uh, <laughs> well, okay, thanks. Uh, you can Venmo me, uh, or someone should Venmo me. Uh, hey, Steve, <laughs> let me ask you a little bit about um, Michigan and specifically blue-collar blue voters uh, out there, and not just the Rust Belt in Michigan, but other states there. Everybody's been making this argument that, oh, Trump in the general election, oh, gosh, he's going to lose it and the whole thing. Here's the thing. It seems to me that the more the indictments pile up, the more the aggrieved voter rises, especially in the Rust Belt uh, states. I, I believe, and I know he did well, really well in 2020, but of course he won the presidency in 2016. I believe that any of those Rust Belt voters that he lost to Biden in 2020 will come back actually to him in 2024 based on a lot of things, the, the economy, but also the, all of the indictments piling up, I think he starts to get those voters back that the, the media talks about how he lost in 2020. Yeah. Interesting you mentioned that, uh, if I may weigh in on that. Uh, well, because yes. I've been hearing that exact thing from voters in Michigan. People that were uh, strong Trump supporters in 2016, voted for him in 2020, but after that, kind of lost their mojo, kind of lost their momentum, or kind of like, you know, I'm kind of over the whole Trump thing, it's all this chaos and this and that. I hear those people coming back now, and I'm talking to different people. I'm talking to, to independents. I'm talking to Trump Democrats, if you will, people that were like, you know, I'm over it. But then they're like, you know, if they're attacking him this, you know, feverishly, this consistently, this often, then I'm with Trump because he must be the answer. If they keep attacking him like that, and I'm hearing that from a whole variety, a cross-section of people in Michigan, which is why I think you see this Emerson poll with Donald Trump leading. And it's not just Michigan. It's also Arizona. It's also New Hampshire. Donald Trump is, is in a great position in some key swing states. And then you look at this whole case, you know, criminalizing free speech by Jack Smith, which is absurd to so many people. I mean, you can go back and look at a whole, you know, super reel of people like Hillary Clinton and Adam Schiff and the list goes on of people that didn't trust the 2016 election, that Trump was an illegitimate president. Apparently that's perfectly legal because otherwise they should be impaneling grand juries all over this country to indict Hillary Clinton and Adam Schiff and, and Hakeem Jeffries and all these Democrats have said that Donald Trump was not a legitimate president, that the Russians helped him steal the election, which we know is completely bogus and false. And every, you know, this has been completely discredited, all of it. And, and yet this is, you know, the narrative that they, that they went with. So this idea of criminalizing free speech, to me, is the most offensive thing. And I think that Democrats should be offended by it as well. Look, if we're going to hold, yeah. I mean, if we're going to say politicians can't stretch the truth, politicians can't lie, we better round up some school buses because a lot of folks from D.C. are going to prison and soon if that's, if yes, that's the method. Yes, exactly. <laughs>